Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our MIDI guide. Last week in the comments section, a lot of people asked me if they could still use MIDI even if they didn't have a MIDI keyboard or uh, another kind of MIDI controller. And the answer to that is yes, you can. There are numerous ways you can take advantage of MIDI and how awesome it is, even if you don't have a MIDI keyboard. And I'm gonna show you those things today. Your first option is to use the same MIDI editing that I used last week and just draw the notes in. So there's a pencil feature up here. You can take the pencil and you can just draw your notes in. So there's our, there's our C, and then we'll draw in an E, and Okay, so you can just come right in here and draw a pattern in, and then you can listen to that being played back. Okay, so there's that way. Uh, let's get rid of those though. Uh, let's say that you are more comfortable with uh, a typical score editor. Uh, so maybe you actually write out your music um, in, 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 on sheet music. Okay, so we also have a score editor, which is right here. And uh, we can choose our notes up here. So it's the quarter note. And we'll come in here and we'll do that same pattern that we were just playing with a second ago in the regular MIDI. So I'm just gonna put the pattern in nice and quick here. Uh, you can just scroll up and down to put the notes in with your mouse, just move it up and down, uh, and the sharps and flats are automatically there. If you drag your mouse slow enough, it will give you the options for sharps and flats, uh, but we don't need any of those right here. Okay, skip a measure, right over here. Okay, so now if I play that back, Same thing as drawing in the notes. And the cool thing about the score editor here is that as you put in the notes, it updates our MIDI in real time in this editor view. So you could also come in and change the velocities like we did last time, make a few notes louder, a few notes quieter, give it a little more of a human feel. So if you play that back now. Okay, it just kind of livens it up a little bit, makes it feel a little more human. So this is one way, this is the score editor. And you're not limited to just a piano here. You could have 30 different staves here if you were doing a full orchestra arrangement. It's whatever kind of project you're working on, uh, you can adjust the score editor to be whatever you need it to be. Okay, so let's say you wanna add some drums and percussion to your song. Uh, now typically when you're working with MIDI, you assign certain pieces of the drum kit to certain keys on the keyboard. So you would assign your kick drum to middle C, and then your snare would be D, and your toms could be E and F, etc. Uh, but it's not a very intuitive way to work uh, for drums. So instead, we also have what's called a drum editor. So you can come in here and it has all the pieces of the drum kit labeled right down the side. So you have your bass drum, your snare, your hand claps, your hi-hats, anything you could want is there. So we can come in here and also again make um, a, a beat. So we'll come in here and we'll throw a few notes in. Okay, so there's our kick drum if we listen to that back. All right, and then we'll add a snare in. So we'll do the snare on the upbeats. All right, now here, these are your measures, in case you're wondering how I know where to put these notes or whatever. Here's your measures. So you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. So basically, I'm just working with the downbeats right now, every other one, kick, snare, kick, snare. So uh, it'd be a very basic pattern. Okay, we come in here and maybe flavor that up a little bit if we want to add in a couple of extra snare hits here, so have a little bit of fun with it. Again, we have our velocities down here that we can adjust, so if we want a certain uh, hit to be harder than the others, we can just come in here and turn it up a little bit, uh, or if we want certain ones to be a little bit more shallow, we can do that as well. Um, so you can just keep building your pattern in here. We'll come over here and maybe add in some uh, hi-hats. That'll go on every, let's see, there we go. All right, so now we have our hi-hats for a full measure here at the beginning. Okay, and you can throw in some crashes if you want. Um, oh, sorry, crash symbols here. Then we can come in here and Okay, so you can build your whole beat that way and you don't have to use any kind of notes or weird things like that. You can just come right, right in here and map it out using the drum editor. 
So now that I've shown you all the basic ways you can work with MIDI, I wanna show you some little tips that I use to make MIDI sound a little bit better because you're working with a very quantized system, so all your notes are very exact. And also you're working with a lot of synthesis, which means it's faking the sounds of these instruments unless you're using sample libraries. So um, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at our bass track here. Now our bass is pretty simple pattern here. Uh, I'll play a little bit of it for you so you can hear it, but again, this this isn't going to sound like a real bass because it's just a MIDI. It's not somebody playing it. Okay, that's not going to fool anyone, and it's really not meant to, but it does give us a nice little bass pattern. So what I do to kind of spice it up a little bit is I'll usually throw an amp simulator and compressor on it. So I would treat it the same way that I would treat a, a realistic bass or, or a physical bass that I'd be playing. So I have my cabinet sound here. I gave it a modern kind of new metal sound, so almost like a corn distortion. Uh, so if we come back now and take a listen to that, I'm turn it down a little bit. Uh, you'll hear that it sounds a little bit more like a realistic bass. So there's your distorted bass, which uh, sounds nice and fun, especially if we come back in here now and we'll throw in our drums and percussion that we have programmed. Okay, and then we'll add in a little bit of piano that we had programmed earlier. Okay, we can also do a little bit of work with some synthesizers. So if we come in here and add some synths into our composition. Once you have all these backing tracks done, then you can go ahead and record some vocals over it. So that just goes to show you that there are many ways that you can use MIDI to kind of help round out your productions. If you're a guitar player or a piano player, but you really don't have drums and bass guitars and violins and all this other stuff, you can use MIDI to kind of pepper your arrangements. Um, or for musicians like me, it's fun to create an entire song just out of MIDI and build every single instrument by hand this way. Uh, some people might see it as tedious, but I think it's really exciting. If you have any other questions about MIDI or virtual instruments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. I will answer everything I can. And uh, Bill, I will see you tomorrow.